Right, everybody, welcome back to Talent Dead. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Dr. Eric Scanson, and today we have a guest who is literally shaping the future of education around <laughs> this topic of AI. Um, William Grube from Groovy Education, uh, currently pursuing an accelerated master's degree in computer science at North Dakota State University, horns up. Um, Will has spoken to over 30 schools and big name conferences offering real-time solutions to the educational landscape. So not only is he a scholar, but he is a doer, uh, training educators in AI, and, and like I said, over 30 schools on a scholarly study about educators' reactions to AI this academic year. Um, unique blend, academic rigor, hands-on research, firsthand student experiences. Um, he is on a mission to prepare both educators and students for increasingly AI-driven world. With that, intro. Will, it is a pleasure to have you on Talent Dead today. Yes, thank uh, why don't you, you so much. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? I mean, after yes. that, if there's anything that I missed, you let <laughs> yes, us know. I'm, but... I'm William Gruby. So back when ChatGPT came out back in November, I started presenting at schools to kind of get the word out there. I was at this unique intersection to kind of bridge the gap between computer science and education. All my internship work was done at a service co-op in Minnesota that serviced schools with cybersecurity so I've got to be hands-on with schools, with technology for a while now. And I really got to know, notice that, you know, teachers put on so many different hats during the day. They don't always have the time to learn about these new technology tools, but with something as powerful as AI and how impactful ChatGPT has been, I decided it was a great opportunity to step in and bridge the gap between computer science and education. So like I said, started presenting at schools before school let out last year. I presented at 30 plus schools all across the nation. And then that got me a couple spots at the Innovative School Summit, the Las Vegas conference, their Chicago conference coming up here in November, along with at a conference in Austin, Texas, the TCEA. And then also after that, it kind of developed more into a training program. So the presentation is really, really good at getting that mental shift from, oh my gosh, AI is scary. Let's ignore mm -hmm. it to, hey, AI is here. It's affecting how our students learn. And it's going to probably have to affect how we teach, but also let's learn how to use these tools to our advantage. So it kind of brings all of that information together, still with the same presentation of shifting the mindset and then showing them how they can prepare students for a future where they have an AI tool that is so much better than what we're seeing today and really showing them how they can do this while utilizing AI tools. Well, I mean, we, when we think back historically, there's there's been innovations that have completely changed the world, you know, um, internet, you know, well, I am positive you weren't alive when, when internet hit, but um, <laughs> I was, and uh, what a game changer it was. I remember sitting at my friend's house, experiencing the internet for the first time, and it was dial-up, and um, he would he would search a picture, and we would wait as the screen would go <laughs> like this. Now you just have to wait while ChatGPT just starts writing for you. Right, it's, it's yeah. kind of the same thing, right? So, I mean, you, you got internet, you've got electricity, um, gosh, you name it. But there's there's always a moment of fear with it, right? Like, oh, this Absolutely. is crazy. This is something something not good is going to happen. Um, but you kind of have this perspective of of how and and some insights and in how technology is evolving and what that means for us. Um, and you have this perspective of like. 13-year-old student now, mm -hmm. what's going to be happening in 10 years? Tell us about this uh, this kind of unique perspective that you try to offer. Yeah, well, if we think about, think of the first iPod, right? All you could do is load MP3 files on it and press play. And now we all walk on with iPhones. And inside of our iPhones, we have AI tools that can pass the exams that our lawyers take with ChatGPT. So that is just exponential growth, something that we would not have even thought of when the iPod came out. That's not where any of our brains were going with mm -hmm. it, but it went there. And with something like ChatGPT, it's the first time we had, the public had democratized free access to these AI tools 
through chat, which everybody can use. Mm -hmm. So that is kind of that first iteration. That's your iPod. So what is the iPhone of ChatGPT and AI tools alike? And we have to know it's probably something that we can't wrap our heads around right now. Just like with the iPod, we would never have thought of where we're at today. Right. So just understanding that the exponential growth of the technology is going to keep on happening and we know it's going to get exponentially better. In the four short in the first four short months from ChatGPT dropping, four months later, ChatGPT4 dropped and it went from the 10th percentile in the uniform bar exam to the 90th percentile in the uniform bar exam. Whoa. So we already see how fast these tools grow. And uh, we just have to know that we have to set our students up for a future where they thrive in front of AI and not behind it. So, I mean, that's a good segue to this next question. Um, you've done a lot of hands-on work, speaking training to educators of Ross Perry schools. Mm -hmm. um, you must have run into some misconceptions that educators have about implementing AI in education. Can you give us just a, a teaser on some of the things that you've seen out there? Yes. Um, lots of teachers, you know, right away when you start talking to them, because at first, you know, when we start talking about ChatGPT, kind of the first wavelength that it goes is it's a cheating tool and it's mm -hmm. only a cheating tool. And that's the biggest misconception is that it's only a cheating tool. It's more, it's a tool for everybody. I show them that it has use cases across every single field. We're talking sales, generating persuasive sales scripts. It can write code, obviously communication. That's probably the number one use case for it is writing those emails, you know, mm -hmm. doing the busy work that we all do throughout our days. So getting them, the biggest misconception is, oh, this is only a cheating tool to, hey, this is huge and it helps so many people and it's helping so many people right now. We can't ignore it. Um, I mean, it, you know, one concern that, that I've heard is it can potentially hamper like this development of critical thinking skills in students by simplifying Absolutely. tasks. Um, you know, I, when I've played around with it, I see it as a modeling tool. You know, I, I like it gives us a really great model to, to evaluate, to, to look at, um, and almost in a, in a teaching way, uh, how, how can we strike the balance between leveraging AI for efficiency and modeling yes. versus nurturing critical thought? Yes, this is actually, so my training program is broke up into four days. This is the second day. It's called revamping our assignments to, to account for AI's presence, which means, okay, how can we start to give out our assignments so students can't simply go home and if they were to use ChatGPT, complete them all by themselves? Because we talk about how it is severely hindering their critical thinking skills and a student who goes to a school that does not take into account the existence of AI is going to be severely behind a student who goes mm -hmm. to a school that does account for the existence of AI because given our accounting for the existence of AI we can tweak assignments and tweak our question making strategies or adding things onto assignments things that AI cannot do, whether that's relating it to their everyday life, relating to something that was discussed in class, adding on a portion to the assignment where they have to submit a quick 15 second video, them explaining the hardest topic on a math problem or the hardest mm -hmm. math problem on the assignment, you know, adding something on that AI cannot do for them can be huge for developing those critical thinking skills. Right. I mean, cheating, cheating has been evolving for a while. I mean, I, yes. you know, Cheating has been around and will always be around. So it, this is an evolution of potentially what cheating could be. So instead of just deterring cheating through technology, how can we, I mean, this is, these are some examples of how you've redesigned curricula to, to make cheating inherently more difficult or even maybe even irrelevant. Yeah, um, so I like to bring up the, I like to say to the teachers, it's more terminating the arms race that's happening between education and anti-cheating technology and make it more impossible to cheat by the way the curriculum is given. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a, that's a great approach. I love that. Um, there's, there's also a concern that children attending schools that don't integrate AI will be at a disadvantage. You talked about that. Can you elaborate not, on yeah, that? Gap? Not necessarily integrating AI. Cause that's, that's, you know, teacher to teacher, if they want to bring AI into their classroom, they absolutely can use it as a learning tool. It can be a great learning tool when it's used in the correct ways. And in day three of the training, we actually go into, okay, how can we safely and in, safely and ethically integrate AI into the classroom? But it's not necessarily integrating AI. It's more taking into account that it exists. That it making, exists. Yes. So we're not, we're not setting up students with uh, chat GPT accounts and telling them to do all of their writing through it. Yeah we're, we're, we're making it, we're making the curriculum, um, adaptable 
so that yeah. it's more difficult to use chat gpt do you yeah. you know on the flip side of that is there a is there a circumstance where you believe that it's appropriate for a teacher to hand over chat bt chat <laughs> chat gpt as a tool to use in the classroom oh yeah absolutely i mean you can just come up with quick quick projects i teach teachers how to do this using chat gpt to come up with these ideas but for example like having students ask ChatGPT to solve a word problem wrong and then going in and showing where ChatGPT mm. solved. So there's all sorts of little cool activities that you can do with ChatGPT and all sorts of cool ways you can integrate it. But yeah, I, I would say as far as everybody implementing into the classroom, because the first thing the teacher needs to have the tech literacy to be able to help students with the tools so that's a big thing is we want to build that tech literacy before we're just giving it to all of our students sure. so we can help them. Um, and of course, we know our students have the tech literacy to use these tools. They do. Um, <laughs> they've been given iPads at a very young age. They they know how to use these tools, well, whether we like it or not. <laughs> you know, there's there's plenty of areas where we, we, we take it very serious, where we train kids first before giving them access, right? You think about... Uh, uh, driving a car. We make them go through courses. We talk about it. We talk about the safety aspects of driving a car. Uh, and then we have a trial period where they have to like, um, you know, practice driving mm -hmm. the car. And then we give them the keys to the car that they can drive by themselves, but it's still a probationary period that they go through. Um, so it's it's this uh, this idea that that we have to be smart as the adults and the teachers in introducing them to the ideas, showing them how to use it responsibly, yeah, and then letting them loose. Yeah, especially since getting on ChatGPT is so easy. Um, you know, the whole taking into account AI's existence in our assignments, you know, when we do that through that, they're going to learn to use them as tools and not crutches. Because if mm -hmm. they're still, you know, so we know students, they might still really want to use those tools to help them out. But if they mm -hmm. are, they can't, it's not doing everything for them. And then through that, they're more using it as a tool and not a complete crutch. They just, cause it's so easy to get on chat GPT. It's so hard to, you know, you can't use it until you're 16 because chat GPT is like, yeah, you can, <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Well, okay. Here's, we're going to shift a little bit. Um, awesome. Will has just an incredible uh, viewpoint on this and is, is riding this wave perfectly right now. And he has stuff to offer you. Um, I want to switch a little bit. I want to come over to some fun questions around uh, chat GPT or AI. Let's do it. Um, Will, if you had to go on a road trip with chat GPT, yes. who would you choose as your co-pilot and why? Oh, gosh. Who would I? And I can't choose chat GPT. <laughs> well, I mean, chat GPT is there. And, you know, if you yes. had to go on a road trip with it, um, who, who are you going to bring as your co-pilot? My co-pilot, I would say, I, oh, here's a good one. I always bring this up when I'm talking to teachers. I would say one of my best friends from high school because he just graduated college with his construction management degree. And uh, he was, he got his first job as a project manager at a big construction company in Fargo, North Dakota. And his boss came up to him about two weeks into his, in two weeks into starting the job. And he was like, hey, how are you spending so much time in the field? You're getting all your work done. I have no issues. But like, we're all in the office until about lunchtime. And you're only in the office for the first two hours, but you're still getting all your work done. Like, how? And then my friend pulled up ChatGBT, showed oh him how he's writing his emails, doing scheduling for him. And his boss is kind of like, I don't know what that is, but keep doing it. Yeah. So, Mind and, blown. Yes. And he loves it. And he's doing a great job at his job. And he gets to spend more time in the field with the guys doing managing, you know, what he right. went to college for, and reflecting that back onto education, you know, and spending more time with the students and getting rid of a lot of that busy work. So what a great example of uh, practical application. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go Terminator on us right now. So imagine yeah. chat GPT becomes self-aware like Skynet. Yeah. What's the first question you would ask it? Oh, oh gosh, I would ask it. How do we get to Mars? <laughs> What's the meaning of life? <laughs> no. There, some yeah. big questions. Yeah. Let yeah. it process, right? <laughs> yes. Um, I say if AI had a sense of humor, but I kind of think it does. Like it, 
it like it kind of understands humor a little bit like however that happens yeah. um if if ai had a sense of humor uh what kind of jokes do you think it would tell <laughs> well if uh oh gosh that would completely depend coming from the computer science perspective. It would completely depend what it's trained off of. What it's you know, trained if it's off, trained off of uh, Theo Vaughn jokes, it's going to joke like that. If it's dad jokes. Off, Dave yeah. Knock, dad knock joke. Joke. yeah, who knows, yeah. right? So whatever it's trained off of is what my brain just immediately goes to. <laughs> and it's just, it's interesting. Like I listen to a lot of, a lot of podcasts and things of that nature that revolve around AI and people talking about it being like sentiment, like having human thoughts. And I just find it very interesting because some people are like, is that really what we think we are? Is mm -hmm. just this or is it seriously? Because it's a lot of like linear algebra that goes on in these AI systems or is it, do we really think we're just math? So I find that extremely interesting as well. I just, I didn't remember where I read it, but um, it was some sort of a study around uh, empathy, em empathetic responses with a um, a chat, what do you call it, chat bot um, that was answering as a doctor to patients versus real mm -hmm. doctor answers and, and responses to patients. Um, the the chat bot actually had a much higher rate of empathy in the responses than uh, than a real doctor. I, what do you think about that? Yeah, it's, so if we train it on only good things, so for example, if we take all the doctors that say the right things in the right moments, and instead of the doctors kind of training themselves on everything that they've gone through in their lives, AI mm -hmm. can train itself on maybe what 500 doctors and in this in this position this doctor says this so i'm gonna say this or you think of sales like we can only have so much sales training but when with if you have a sales ai that's trained off of all the sales training mm -hmm. in this situation this person says this and that's how it can be better in those ways is because it can navigate away from the common mistakes we make because it can see them and interesting yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Last one. You're trapped on a desert island. You can have one AI powered gadget with you. What would it be? Oh gosh. That's a hard one because you're trapped on an island. So anything in your computer is really not gonna do much for you. Well let's let's uh let's update that prompt. You would do have Wi-Fi. Do have Wi-Fi? Yes. Oh gosh. Then I would probably I'd probably have to just say ChatGPT just because it really has the unlimited use cases. Can't really think of, you yeah, know, you can talk to it. <laughs> <laughs> it could be your chat buddy, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, build a fire. <laughs> one more, one more. I think this one might be fun. Um, yeah. If ChatGPT could generate food recipes, which I think it can. Yes, I've never tried it. I never actually tried to do a recipe. That'd be an interesting experiment, maybe for a facts classroom. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, would you would you trust it to plan your Thanksgiving dinner? Oh gosh, a whole Thanksgiving dinner? Probably not. Maybe ChatGPT four. If you, if if anybody has ChatGPT plus, maybe ChatGPT four. But ChatGPT three, I would not trust that thing to <laughs> for my Thanksgiving dinner. No. <laughs> All right. Um, well, these are just some fun questions to kind of think about, uh, you know, us going forward with with um, with AI and what it could potentially do for us. I, I just want to recap some things uh, with you, Will. Um, we don't need to be scared of ChatGPT, right? We we need to understand it so that we know how to best navigate it in our schools and in our systems. Um, what what would be your call to action here to out to educators besides you know wanting to book Will to come talk to you? Yes, because that is absolutely a really good call to action. <laughs> yes, my first call to action is just really to be making sure that we're preparing our students for a future. I've said it a lot, but where they do have AI tools that are exponentially better than what we're seeing today, because that is the reality. They are going to. You know, there's nothing we can necessarily do about that. We have to understand that and we have to see like, wow, also hop on ChatGPT, see what it can do for you. There's also fantastic tools online for educators, Magic School AI, 100% give it a check out. It's completely free. There's 50 plus tools, an instructional coach. Um, another one, Eduaid, same thing, 50 plus tools, an assessment builder, a feedback bot where you just get to paste oh. in the students and it just pops out. Like these are amazing tools, 100% go check out 
AI tools for educators. There's a bunch of free ones that are absolutely incredible. And especially even do it directly with ChatGPT. You're going to be blown away by what you by what you get back. And we can use all of these tools to help prepare our students for, for the future. I like to say that we've kind of in these unique times where we can utilize the AI tools to accommodate our curriculum, to accommodate for the presence of AI. That was a bit of a tongue twister. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we have to prepare our students for a future where they have AI tools that are better, understand they're here, and understand how helpful they can be for you. Awesome. Well, Will, it's been a pleasure to have you uh, talk with us today and, and share a little bit about your background, your history, where you're, where you're going. Um, and for the rest of us, uh, the, I guess I got to say, well, folks, I mean, that brings us to the end of another episode of Talent Ed. Um, a massive thank you again to Will um, from thank you for Room V Education uh, for joining us today and for diving into the uh, these intricacies really of AI and education and and to those fun, quirky questions. Again, thank you again. Yes, thank um, you. It's been a jam-packed session filled with insights and laughs. And uh, here's what I'll say, you know, everybody keep learning uh, out there and stay positive kind and supportive or PKS and we'll be checking in with you next time. Thanks everybody.